<laughs> Welcome to In the Studio. Today we have two special guests, Zach and Morgan from Domination and Gland. Hey, I'm Morgan from Domination and Gland. And Zach from Domination and Gland. <laughs> so what do you guys do in each band? Are you guys singers, songwriters? I play guitar and do a little backup vocal sometimes. Very badly, though. <laughs> Yeah, but he's loud and that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. I just do like the mouth noises for the most part in all the bands because I've always been like just death metal bands. I don't really have to sing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, mostly that, but I do a little bit of writing. Like I play a bit of guitar and a bit of bass. So I wrote like most of the Gland EP and like a couple upcoming Dom songs. So when you mean mouth noises, are you more like the guttural, like vocal yeah. kind of? Just like uh, a lot of like growls and screams and all sorts of weird, gross stuff. Nice. Gargles a lot. <laughs> yeah. Just the fun stuff. So were you always into like doing that for vocals or was that something you like eventually like wanted to get into? Or? No, I think I originally wanted to actually be a singer and then I was like, ah, my voice isn't really tailored for this, so I'll just settle and scream. Nice. <laughs> I mean, hey, you got to take what you can get, I guess. <laughs> Did you have to like practice lots for that or was it just kind yeah. of natural? It's it's pretty hard to do it in a way where like you don't damage your throat. Mm -hmm. Like you got to like learn the proper theory to it. And uh, But I started around the time I was like 14 in high school and stuff and went from there and now I'm 19, so a couple years of practice. So I think I'm pretty good now. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I um, I was going to ask, did you study music, like formal classical music background at all? Or you just kind of picked it up and took to metal? Um, I was in some music classes in high school, <laughs> including um, stage band and oh. a classical guitar class. None of that carried over whatsoever. I recently tried to link uh, the Gland EP to our old music teacher from high school. And he was, and he didn't even reply. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really have anything of what you learned. It's kind of completely. No, crazy. yeah, it's it's sort of just. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm playing guitar or anything. Like, uh, I was recently writing some black metal, and like, I don't know how to get like all the diminished chords and all that stuff because I don't really play guitar. So I was just kind of fiddling around and finding the chords I wanted mm -hmm. as I'm writing the music. So I find like it gives a kind of a more unique writing style when I don't really have any theory background. I'm just sort of making yeah. sounds but yeah. so Morgan how about you any music background or just kind of picked up guitar one day <clears throat> yeah I don't know I did uh, music classes through like grade 7 and 8 and like throughout high school and like I did a same thing kind of like a stage band and I played uh, bass clarinet and then I just realized that shit was lame and played <laughs> guitar and uh, I'm kind of trying to learn the actual guitar like you know theory stuff now because I don't know it very well and uh yeah oh yeah I mean hey I mean everyone you always have time to like learn instruments I find it's the yeah. gradual mm -hmm. process never too late to learn yeah so in terms of guitar you guys are both like pretty self-taught then for playing sort of I mean I wasn't really self-taught in the beginning I had a couple like teachers show me like you know proper like technique and like mm -hmm. form and whatever and then yeah, kind of just self-taught from there. Just little things I find online, just videos on like how to improve. Guitartabs.com. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's what I learned. That's the best shit ever. Yeah. yeah. Songster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember using Songster a lot, of course. So good. Just plays yeah. along to it. Yeah. Like, so you guys are both metal musicians, of course. So what got you into metal? Was it like a gradual like love of it, or did you like always listen to it, even as a younger, like... Uh, in middle school say yeah for me when I was younger I always liked bands like you know Led Zeppelin and like Van Halen and stuff and then I like obviously found Metallica and I was like whoa like this is the heaviest band ever and then like I got in <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the coolest shit and then I just started listening to metal and that's it well uh, for me I, I guess I wasn't always super into metal like I was really into like a lot of like hip-hop and stuff like that especially around like uh, I'd say like elementary school and then once I hit like grade 7 and Eight, I started like my first band because I picked up guitar uh, with my buddy who now plays uh, bass in Gland, uh, Matt. And uh, yeah, no, we were just starting to listen to metal, like uh, bands like Metallica, Pantera, stuff like that that pulled us in. And uh, now I can't say I'm a huge fan of like a lot of the Metallica stuff anymore, but like the influence it had on, you know, musicians like us is just pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it's uh, same kind of thing, just gradually pulled into metal, I guess. Yeah. By friends, mostly. 
so metal like was like a big part of like I guess your musical influence eventually and uh, yeah would you say uh, Metallica was one of those like founding like like I guess it's not like a gateway band it's like yeah it's mm-hmm. like the gateway band of metal I guess everyone has listened to Metallica yeah. at some point or, yeah. or definitely one of them yeah because <laughs> I listening to your music you're more of you're way more harsh than Metallica oh, yeah. and so what bands would you say like definitely influence that sound more so than Metallica uh um I don't know bands <laughs> like Vader uh, Obituary Suffocation the old school death metal nice shit. yeah um i guess for me like a lot of uh there's a lot of, like grind influence like uh rotten sound like napalm death mm-hmm. uh, a lot of like just earlier stuff <laughs> of course yeah um and a lot of like death metal like skinless and uh some gore grind and all that jazz like gut I, a lot of that gets like there's a lot of influence of that kind of stuff in gland especially because okay. gland is so like Violent, like it's probably one of the most gory, gross projects I've ever worked on, and so like it takes a lot from the really extreme genres of metal, like mm-hmm. skinless, a hundred percent. People always say like pyrophilic consumption off of our EP sounds like, at least at the beginning, a little bit like uh, the Optimist by uh, Skinless, but. I, I, I don't think they sound similar at all. <laughs> yeah, you, all, you want to have that unique sound, but you're always going to have, like, influences, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the biggest ones for us. So what would you kind of classify you guys as? Like, grind? Or, like, what would you classify your metal as? Death grind. Okay. Gross death metal. Nice. Those are, like, nice. the two sort of ones I pick. Yeah, yeah I loved your, um, what's a car, uh, chainsaw? Um, Episiotomy. Episiotomy, yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I, looked yeah. Up, I looked up what it meant um, before you guys came in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the, um, how you guys like you have like those uh, gross out like album covers of like the pizza pop being like, ripped open yeah. the intestines yeah. I love those one the gland pockets yeah. I, I, <laughs> was, I was gonna ask you a little bit actually about that kind of gross out factor that comes in the name and I guess the, the artwork I didn't see mm-hmm. the pizza pocket but um, what kind of because it is a common theme in metal does that come from something um like that you guys are actually thinking about or is it more kind of the, the convention of the genre you'd say uh, I'd say it's more just like the genre and like a lot of it uh, is for sure like it's in the same idea in the same vein as like horror movies it's all the shock factor like it's all just art um, except it's less drawn out so it's usually a lot more violent tucked into a much smaller pocket um, so yeah like a lot of our stuff that's like really gross is like very similar to like a lot of early like porno grind like I mentioned gut earlier and stuff like that like just really really abrasive and violent sexual lyrics but like None of us are actually like like that. <laughs> Bad people. We're like yeah, all like, pretty decent folks. It's just like that's sort of what this genre of metal like is about. Mm-hmm. So a lot of like the lyrics are just really, really over the top. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, because I, I know for a fact like a lot of people. It's more of a serious topic now, I guess. Like to give metal like the oh the metal people into metal music are more like bad people they shouldn't be trusted but mm-hmm. in my experience I have everyone I met who's like into the metal music or into in metal bands tend to be some of the nicest like people and like most down to earth people I know where I meet like people in indie bands who are just like garbage like <laughs> pretentious jerks like oh I'm gonna be that brooding son mm-hmm. position just a jerk to everyone kind of thing yeah so do you guys think that like based off like some like the few bad examples like of course like Varg Virkinus or whatever like <laughs> like you guys get that, about him. you know but you guys get like that bad rap like metal like not you guys but metal in general um somewhat I mean people do tend to think that a lot but like I find that to kind of you know that way of thinking is like really dying off when mm-hmm. people like actually meet metal musicians and they're like hey these people are alright yeah and like they're just like normal people who just like heavy music yeah you know? mm-hmm. do you think that it's almost an outlet to the fact that the genre has so many kind of like violent lyrics or imagery maybe that it's able to be expressed through that as opposed to like mu- the metal musicians being bad people it's kind of like a channel to vent any anger or whatever like yeah. maybe going on mm-hmm. kind of yeah okay I mean for me there are some days when I've just been really mad mm-hmm. really mad at Zach specifically <laughs> I just like I just sit down and just like write music like I just like play some angry guitar music mm-hmm. and uh Helps you be less mad at Yeah, Zach. pretty much. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and then I find myself with these, like, cool riffs. I'm like, ah, thanks, Zach. <laughs> it's a healthy way to go to anger with me, like, yeah. instead of just beating me up or something. Like I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, when you guys talk about, say, um, your music, I guess, would you... 
would you say it's a like a good environment? Like, a, I know a lot of people are scared to get to go to metal shows. I'm like, oh, is it not going to be like a violent environment? Because a lot of like maybe mosh pits or death walls or circles. Um, would you guys say it's a very like open environment at your shows? Yeah, yeah. As um, as someone who like promotes shows and spends like a lot of his time at shows, like I put a lot of effort into making sure every show that I put on or play is like a safe space for everyone. Like, if you don't want to get like hit by people around the mosh pit and shit, like mm-hmm. you shouldn't have to worry about that. People aren't going to run around crowd killing and punching you in the face. Granted, crowd killing is cool at hardcore shows. Just don't run and punch people who are standing at the bar, that kind of shit. But, um, yeah, like, just making sure it's a safe, inclusive space for everyone and, like, nobody has to worry about, I don't know, getting hurt or whether, like, emotionally or physically and uh, if we're feeling left out at the show and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. So. I think it's important that like metal has that kind of open vibe, you know, that's because yeah. metal is one of the most open music genres, in my opinion. There's so much like experimentation and all that kind of stuff going on within the genre. It's just an open minded genre of music, in my opinion. Yeah. And on that note, actually, I was going to ask you, um, because metal has it's kind of like an umbrella genre and there's so many different things that fall under it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you have like the death metal, metal core and then like all these new things that seem to come out of the woodwork every every day is there anything yeah. that you're really kind of like what like just you find really questionable or something that might be newer to metal and you're like oh this isn't yeah there's always a couple genres that come out every now and then that <laughs> i don't i always I know they are some weird like 2000s things and i'll see and i'll be like is this really i don't know yeah <laughs> it's usually some variation on like progressive genres because they always have like a thousand branches they go mm-hmm. off in with all the jazz fusion and the technicality and all that stuff so <laughs> the names get too long i don't do you know any ones i don't know not really i mean recently like i discovered like grind for the first time well not recently like in the past like six months or so and i was like grind what the hell is that i know like thrash metal and death metal Mm -hmm. like grind like that's so weird but then i listen to it i'm like hey that's pretty good okay you know i don't know that's yeah kind of it for me Mm-hmm. A lot of the subgenres in metal, like, unless you're really into the genre, you won't really hear the difference between them. Um, like, you gotta be really into it. Just, like, mm-hmm. I personally can't... As much as I do like the genre, I'm just not too into it. I can't tell the difference between pop punk, skate punk, or <laughs> what's the other kind? It's, like, the exact same thing. Oh, are there different divisions of pop punk now? Unfortunately. Wow, yeah, I'm, wow, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew it like, better. I gotta go to more shows. <laughs> Like, yeah, they, they have, like, these genres, but you sometimes mm-hmm. can't tell the difference. Yeah, yeah you got to be really into the genre. Like, sorry, yeah, into the genre you're listening to. Like, uh, I don't really like the metal elitist use of, like, subgenres, but, like, they are good for, like, trying to figure out what you want to listen yeah. to. Because just... mm-hmm. you're going to have, like, some more, like, operatic, like, like, more, like, operatic metal, but the more, like, intense, like, the, like, strings and stuff in the background if you prefer exactly. that. Or mm-hmm. you want pure, like, grind, which is heavy guitars. Exactly. It just helps you find what you yeah. want, you know? Yeah, I, I think subgenres are important for a mm-hmm. uh, category as broad as metal especially yeah so that's definitely something that's good to know yeah as long as it's not used as like a weapon against someone who yeah you know like, oh well you right. like grind yeah. but you, you suck <laughs> I like thrash better yeah. exactly mm-hmm. yeah. do, you, do you take influence from like other subgenres that you wouldn't necessarily play in like other kind of I think so okay yeah I, yeah. <laughs> I try to like I mean for me like um bands like death that are like really like uh, a classic kind of yeah a classic and like kind of progressive and like technical and like I like to listen to them and like you know try and write stuff that like they would kind of write but like not <laughs> exactly <laughs> in their style you know but kind of drawing on those sense. roots I guess that yeah you know. kind of yeah, it's more for like an inspiration rather than yeah like a, I'm gonna try this new genre let's see what I can take from it and experiment with yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. another um, interesting question I have to hear what you guys think do you guys feel that um a lot of metal musicians are pigeonholed to being like, oh, they only listen to metal. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say? Some of your favorite like genres or bands that wouldn't be classified as metal? Oh, you want to go first? Like guilty pleasures, uh, like Taylor Swift in the house. No. I mean, there's the obvious ones like Rush and like Hootie. Mm-hmm. Oh, Hootie and the Blowfish, hard. <laughs> um, you know, Blink One Eighty Two is pretty good, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. recently, I've been getting into Panic at the Disco. Oh, yeah, you can't Daniel. not be into Panic. I love. <laughs> oh, dude, they're so good. Go. Brendan Murray is just phenomenal. Amazing. Like, he's on Broadway now too, and I'm like, yeah, yeah he's just um, the best. I know. Yeah. And how about you, Zach? Any? Um, I've been really, really into like a Bee Gees kick recently. <laughs> um, I went through like a really big Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons kick for a little while, like a year or so ago. Um, I've been getting like really into like more experimental hip hop, like Mad Villain, like MF Doom oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't know too much, so if you guys listen to any, recommend me some. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, yeah, just... I don't know, not a whole lot though recently outside of metal. I've been trying to like listen to like a lot of stuff just to find like more inspiration on the stuff I've had to write. But of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I like Bee Gees and uh, Frankie Valli and then. Bee Gees rule, man. Yeah, of course they're classics. Yeah, can't go wrong with them. Any harmonizing trio. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask, actually, what do you guys think about the scene in Canada, but Ottawa more so? Because a lot of people will say that Ottawa maybe doesn't have as much of a metal scene as somewhere like Montreal is really known for it. Um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on... I think Ottawa scene is awesome. Yeah. Every, like, everyone seems to be inclusive and like nobody really like bashes other bands. The most they'll say is like, oh, you know, they don't really make this kind of style of music I like. You know, they're not for me. And they'll just leave it at that rather than saying like, oh, that band sucks or like whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot, there's like a lot of bands, like a whole lot of like, you know, different styles, like a whole lot of like deathcore. And then there's like us, like, you know, gross death metal and then like, you know, even metalcore and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, there's a wide variety mm -hmm. just coming out all the time. And y'all kind of tend to, to get along even yeah. if you're not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's generally pretty frowned upon to, like, have the whole metal elitist attitude where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, metalcore, like, fuck that garbage. <laughs> yeah. Even though, like, I kind of don't really like it. I mean, I don't really, like, say that, you know, seriously. I'll mm -hmm. say, like, yeah, whatever, not for me. Do you mm -hmm. feel that a lot of, like, metal bands, like, bigger ones would skip out on coming to Ottawa and rather go to, like, say, Montreal, yeah. like, especially, like, Heavy Montreal heavy or, Montreal, yeah. or Montebello for the rock fest? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, recently we had at least Judas Priest come in but not many other like big metal bands come to Ottawa. Priest was awesome. I'm jealous that you got to see them. That was my it other was so packed favorite the band. Area. Yeah, it was like seemed to get a good turnout. Oh, it was really good. Yeah, yeah that was sick. But uh, I think like yeah, like way too many bands skip Ottawa. I think this city is really good and like if the shows are promoted well enough and the band draws well enough, usually like they do well. Mm -hmm. You don't see a whole lot of like sold out metal shows at Mavericks or anything, but we still like break even on our shows. And I think that's enough that to want to bring artists to our city. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten it's getting better recently what with like um uh, what's the venue Bronson Center doing like mm -hmm. some more shows and stuff like they had suffocation come through and that was pretty unreal um, what was the other one obituary yeah, with Exodus. Exodus that was pretty crazy yeah but uh, I think our scene is really like really really good here like it's so inclusive and like like Morgan was saying everybody gets along like uh, Glenn did a show at Leakey's like everybody knows the house all right yeah uh, we did a show there and it was I think uh, we talked about. I mentioned uh, Noah to you guys earlier. Yeah. You remember his uh, trap group, Unholy Lands? Oh, sorry, not only that's our album, Unholy. <laughs> Jeez, what am I? Th uh, it's Unholy something. Unholy era. Unholy era. <laughs> uh, Unholy era. Sorry, that's the domination album. Yeah. Um, yeah, Unholy Era. They we did a show with them at Leakey's, and they were headlining, and it was a or no, it's Rage Against the Machine cover band headlining, and then Unholy Era. Gland, which is Death Grind, Free Refills, which is Skate Punk, and an emo <laughs> acoustic artist opening up. And it's just all of us getting along yeah. in a house together, That's just good. Good. doing cool shows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like the Ottawa scene. Everybody gets along across all the scenes, I think. Mm. I, I do notice that Ottawa tends to be like a bigger, say, punk and uh, metal scene, and even some grunge too, which is nice to get that. Mm -hmm. And it is expanding more, because of course you'll see like some folk and like other stuff come around. But yeah. It, it's good. I, I like see it, but you won't see any like unfortunately you won't see any like metal acts like headlining blues fest anytime soon no but, but it, i don't think that like it's um specific to metal bigger artists kind of skipping over ottawa i think it's mm. kind of an all genre yeah yeah well, me. yeah miss out on a lot and it's like i know it's depressing we're it's right in between toronto montreal yeah exactly that's the thing extra stop like, yeah squeeze us in yeah yeah at least montreal is not too far yeah true. that's true i've gone to montreal to see some shows that never come to ottawa so. we always hit montreal for the good metal shows we're going in a few weeks i think all the glam guys and stuff and we're gonna go for uh ear slaughter the last slayer show and then we have to go back for like I think 77 Fest yeah. and Heavy MTL and probably Pooza Fest. Nice. It's yeah. going to be a solid book next uh, month or two. That's awesome. <laughs> Just sounds like a great time. Oh, yeah. Montreal's yeah. great for shows. It really is. Do you guys tour a lot outside of Ottawa, and especially Ontario in general? Have you guys gone too far out or just stay close to home, I guess? Um, we've played Montreal twice, once with Domination, once with Gland. we played Toronto once, and... A couple other... Oshawa. Things. Yeah, Oshawa. People we got kicked out, so that wasn't that fun. Oh. <laughs> uh, we had to watch the last band set from the window. 
Why did you get kicked out? We were underage. Oh, no. Uh, we were yeah. supplying the back line. We had to wait and get don't, that back Don't after. they usually give you, though, if you're underage, they'll give you, like, a not drinking bracelet, and then you can play if you... Sometimes. Sometimes the venue just doesn't really know how to actually be a venue. Yeah. And then they just... Yeah. yeah cause we've, had, we've had shows where, like... Like oh yeah they're underage but like we're like yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah we won't get them drinking or we won't yeah. serve them drinks yeah. like Mavericks the will band. put X's on yeah. your hands and then you can't yeah yeah oh. where else have we been I don't know Niagara <clears throat> yeah we played a family restaurant in Niagara that's awesome <laughs> the Geekery Pub it's like Doctor Who <laughs> themed did, did the families uh, appreciate it. I think they mostly left for a set, actually, oh. <laughs> but it was still pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then we played Peterborough in a record store. Yeah. Oh, nice. That was cool. I think it got shut down since then because uh, it wasn't really like much of a record store. Like they had a couple milk crates of vinyls and stuff in there, but like it was just a couple teenagers who owned a storefront and uh, played PS2 games in the front window. <laughs> when we got there, the window was smashed. They were like fixing it up. They turned their like bathroom that was in the back into like a studio. So now you had to go piss in the creek. <laughs> and uh, by by studio they meant like I guess weed smoking room for like before the sets because like there was no gear. But <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. Finds like little hole in the wall venues and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we've been like anywhere else. Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah. Domination has some big tour news like on the way. Like yeah, we're gonna be announcing. <clears throat> That one's a pretty big one. Can, but can you give us any hints as to anything, or is it under wraps for now? Um, it's a European band that's coming to Canada, and we'll oh. be supporting them on the tour. Nice. 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 Did you guys actually open for um, a bigger German singer recently? Uh, yeah. Do uh, you want to talk about that? Uh, sure. Uh, Muto Dirk Schneider. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was a show. <laughs> he Yeah, he set up all his gear on the stage at Mavericks and basically said, like, none of the local bands get to use the stage since, like, all my gear is on there and, like, you won't fit. So just, like, play on the floor in front of the stage. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And so we did that and, like... It was pretty stupid, but we had a good time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, didn't okay. really stay around for his set or anything. Oh. Yeah, like, it was, it was weird. Like it wasn't apparently it wasn't him who was like kicking us off. It was apparently like his sound guy on his tour, like uh, that uh, was on his tour crew. But uh, yeah, there was a review uh, we got of that show like on Kanak dot com, oh, yeah. and the dude just ripped so hard into the road crew of Udo. Like oh, he was yeah. mad at uh, having us on the ground. He was really pissed that that was a situation yeah. that had gone down. Mm -hmm. So he just spent like the entire review just bashing the oh. shit out of Udo's road crew. It was pretty yeah. great. They even denied him his interview with uh, Udo, wow. even though he was pre booked. Wow. Yeah, that was a that was a shit show. Yeah. But Morgan, you climbed up the pillars. Yeah, and at one point. that was fun. Yeah, I was just looking. <laughs> Into the two pillars the whole set and I was like am I gonna climb up those at some point and yeah and during the last song I just kind of like hopped up there and I was like might as well why not yeah probably yeah, won't you gotta have another fun. chance to go out with a bang mm -hmm. have you played with any other bigger artists or kind of kept it mostly local I guess or? um I guess Maybe. Blaze Bailey the old singer from Iron Maiden nice that was pretty cool we got to like meet him and stuff that was cool we uh played with uh, this I don't think this was as big of a deal for like the other members in Domination, but I was really stoked on it. But uh, we played with Entropy, which is like old school like Montreal thrash. Mm -hmm. Like they used to be in like top ten like metal lists in magazines with Metallica yeah. back in the eighties. They were huge, and then like thrash died, and like thrash musicians didn't really know how to keep up, so they kind of fell way behind. But yeah, they still fucking rip, and that was yeah, a really awesome. cool show. There's and two um, Canadian uh, thrash metal bands I know, the Anvil and Exciter. Yeah. Um, my friend actually works with one of the guys from Exciter. At Fleet Music? No, um, he works in Indigenous Affairs in Gatineau. Which guy? I forget his name now, unfortunately, but I think he's one of the... I forget who it is. Dan Beeler? Maybe. I'll have to ask him because he's not... I love Exciter, man. Yeah, so... Because um, he, he, he talks about how he like always leaves for shows. And he's like, I don't know who this guy is. Then I mentioned like these metal bands. He's like... Can you tell, what was it? He's like, Exciter, that's the one. He's like, yeah. Was, he's like, yeah, I work with that guy. <laughs> he's like, he just goes to like Japan or Germany to play shows around because they're bigger over there than they are in North America. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> they used to have Metallica open for them when they first started, and now they don't, they're not as big as Metallica. Mm -hmm. Exciter used to like, they pretty much started speed metal like with Motorhead. Like they used to like co-headline with Motorhead back in the day all mm -hmm. the time, massive tours. Like they're so sick, but they just don't do well in Canada, I guess, that much anymore. But we actually had a huge feud with the old drummer of Exciter. Really? Like, yeah, Domination had like the biggest feud ever with the old drummer of uh, Exciter. Not old, I guess he was like old now, but he was new at the time. Uh, they, they were originally a three piece, right? And their mm -hmm. drummer sang and uh, eventually members left and they got like a new drummer to come in. And uh, yeah, the guy was, I love his stuff. Like, mm -hmm. as much as I don't like the guy, 
amazing drummer. Yeah. Like, man, that Exciter material, as much as everybody else shits on it, listen to it. Later, oh, right. Exciter, yeah. rule, uh, it rules. But uh, anyways, that Blaze Bailey show I was talking about, we played that with Dark Ministry, and uh, I guess he was mad that because he was an Exciter and we were like playing above them in the night, so they overplayed their set by 25 minutes oh. to cut us down to 11. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though they cut our mics, sorry, cut their mics and stuff, they still kept playing. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, there was no sound or anything. The lights were off. They just kept going for like 20 minutes. Wow. Oh, yeah, man. <sighs> I hope they hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send to my friend at, uh, who works with the guy. Wait, link the, them, yeah. This is, uh, I think the actual members of Exciter are like, like the original members are all really nice guys. Okay, it's just yeah. like, this one dude is like <laughs> the like worst. One of those guys like, well, I'm in this bigger band, so I should be able to have a Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think everybody else in the band actually just quit his band, took all the music, recorded it under another name, and That's released funny. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, karma, right? Yeah. Do you guys have an opinion on people say like, who wear like metal shirts but don't really listen to metal. like those people like those fake oh, it's, fans it's all, such a, yeah, it's a thing those now. new like H&M's are like Forever 21 <clears throat> selling metal shirts even though like no one really wears like listens to it who works there or anything yeah I mean I don't know it's like if you want to wear the shirt you can but like if I ask you like hey dude do you like this band that you're wearing the shirt of and they say no I'm just gonna call you a dick like <laughs> yeah. dude it's so dumb if you're wearing the shirt like to me that's saying like hey I like this band and like it's kind of a talking people, point yeah exactly that's mm-hmm. like what I see if I see someone wearing a cool shirt I'll be like hey man like you like this band like let's talk about albums or whatever and they're just like nope I don't like the band don't listen to them it's like okay well fuck off then <laughs> <laughs> and for me it's kind of like I feel like it's a good learning opportunity because I see a lot of like girls specifically that'll have the Slayer Metallica shirts and it's like you could learn two songs by them and if yeah. someone asks mm-hmm. you it's you know something new for you and I know. that's why I think now. it's a good thing personally mm-hmm. I think like people wearing these shirts they don't really know the bands of mm-hmm. that well is still a great thing because it's like giving a lot of these bands even though Usually they're bands that don't need extra promotion, like Slayer. Yeah. But if they're wearing a local band shirt, you know, it's giving a band promotion, even if they don't really enjoy it. They still supported it, bought the merch. Yeah. So that supports the band. they can take a moment, too, to be like, oh, I'm wearing this shirt. Maybe I should educate myself a little bit. Exactly. They'll check it out. Maybe someone else will see it, one of their friends, and check it out. And, uh... Yeah, no, I, I always thought it was kind of cool, like, and it's not that big of an issue. Because when I was working at HMV, like, we sold, like, almost all of our music shirts were sold to people who didn't really listen to the artists. Mm-hmm. Like, they were just there and, like, saw a Slayer shirt. I was like, oh, sick, that looks cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's why we sold a lot of System of a Down shirts, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I always thought it was kind of cool, though. At least you're still supporting the artist. I mean, it's better than a- illegally downloading the shirt <laughs> <laughs> you the wouldn't artist? illegally download a shirt would the artist profit though like wouldn't it have to be officially licensed merch because there's a lot of like forever 21 will make a fake like nirvana shirt yeah. or whatever and i think they're usually licensed like okay. for the most part like if they actually have the logo on it but like h&m is like notorious for like stealing like a band's logo but not their name and it'll like use the font from their logo for um, other things exactly yeah, yeah. and like they're a black metal band who are like super small from Finland shit who had their logos like ripped off and they're just pissed like I was reading so many articles from a few years ago that it was just like people trying to figure out how they were going to get their money from H&M for all the logos that were stolen it's good stuff yeah. that I have an issue with yeah but yeah. Yeah, as long as you're supporting the artist. Speaking of, like, Finnish bands and stuff like that, do you guys listen to a lot of, like, international music that may not have, like, English lyrics? Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't really listen to, like... I mean, like, I can't really tell if they're, like, using other languages. (laughs) It's one of those songs, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's fair, though. But it's good to like. I think it's good to like spread your like music. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. Not just listen to like say North American or English artists sometimes. Yeah, I mean international music like bands definitely like mm. from Finland like Children of Bodom, they're a sick band, yeah. and like uh, what's that other band, Lost Society, mm-hmm. they're good too. Mm-hmm. Like most of the better music comes from like other countries. Yeah, I, yeah. I can probably agree with that too. I mean, I, I've always like really fought that point with my friends. Like it's a general consensus. Like the best metal comes from Europe for most people. I always it's think true. that, I, I always thought that was the stupidest stuff. I think like American <laughs> and Canadian metal is where it's at, especially Canadian. Canadian thrash, top notch. And Canadian grind, like Archigathus or Arcathagus or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah, no. Like, the, But in metal, yeah, overseas metal is such a huge thing. Like, all like the big melodic death metal bands, black metal bands, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's all Scandinavian, I guess. Mm-hmm. Even like Australia has a huge like deathcore and um, melodic death metal scene. Do you guys know the um, Botswana metal scene? 
Have you heard of that? Oh. It's like these. It's this metal scene in Botswana. They're huge, but they dress up like they look like Mad Max people. Like they have like <laughs> they have like full like leather suits like covered in spikes and stuff. That's and, sick. And it's crazy. And it's like of course they're in like eighty like degrees Celsius weather sometimes like fifty degrees Celsius yeah. really. And but they have like this full black like leather suits on. They all like <laughs> like geared out and everything. It's nuts. It's super cool. You should check it out. Like That's I don't really listen to much of their music stuff, but like just seeing like the outfits that they would wear and stuff. It's like crazy. It's like post-apocalyptic stuff that's so cool <laughs> that's cool shit yeah that's so interesting because that's somewhere that you would never really associate with having any kind of a metal scene too I guess it's become very associated with different regions so mm-hmm. it's neat that they kind of yeah because a lot of people associate like the metal scenes with like Scandinavian countries now, yeah. or like Germany like some mm-hmm. of those countries rather than Botswana yeah. <laughs> I was watching like a little like short documentary like a few weeks ago on how like there's a big like death metal scene like growing in South Africa I remember I was actually on this uh, metal sharing page that shares a lot of like domination and glam and stuff they're called uh, unsigned not unheard they do a lot of stuff for the Ottawa bands here even though they're from the states mm. um, anyways there's this band uh, I forget the name of them or anything but uh, either way they were from South uh, uh, yeah South Africa and they kept getting shared on the page and then they started like really putting a spotlight on that um, music scene and that's like the last place in the world you'd expect there to be like a thriving metal scene like mm-hmm. like music in general like like more modern styles of music but like especially like extreme metal because a lot of like South Africa is really really religious and that's always been like a really big thing with metal mm. yeah. so the satanic panic yeah, <laughs> yeah of course you got yeah, that mm-hmm. yeah so that's that's cool mm-hmm. it's nice seeing it expand and mm-hmm. grow mm-hmm. you know do you guys have any uh, stories of like most exciting shows that you've played or like weird crowd reactions people throwing things at you <laughs> um <clears throat> Not that I can think of offhand, no. Zach. Do you know any? Um, weird crowd stuff? Yeah, or just like any anything just kind of notable in um, terms of touring around. Oh, this isn't like a weird, like, it was just like a notable show we played because mm-hmm. like this got everywhere. But that time I hit my vent, I uh, started my head <laughs> on a vent. <laughs> yeah. Did you start bleeding? Uh, no, but it was I just wish. really loud. Oh, no. Uh, there's this video, like, it's re- it's really easy to find in the Ottawa music scene because it did really well. <laughs> Um, World star. It's uh, me playing at Leaky's, and uh, I guess they have a pretty low ceiling there, like with the vents. And I just kind of whipped my head up while like our orchestral opening was playing. And uh, when my head hit the vent, it was so loud. It was louder than the music. Like it was oh my way God. over it. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> but do you guys have like a favorite? Not to put down any other Ottawa venues. We love you all, but do you have a favorite venue you played before? You say or like one you love to go back to a lot? Hmm. Favorite we played. I don't know. Probably Mavericks, but like one that we were supposed to play that we really love is the Brass Monkey, and like mm-hmm. we want to play there so bad because I think that's the coolest venue. Yeah, it is. I've never been there before. I went down to protest the Hero there, and it was nice. like a nice space. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. surprised. It's so far out of the way, but it's they good. renovated the shit out of it. Yeah, it looks really good now. It, it's nice. So I guess Brass Monkey would be a place you'd like really want to play. Yeah, yeah. and okay. we've been like booked there twice, and it just like fell through like both uh-huh. times. So mm-hmm. we really want to like get something going there. But I think for me, probably Cafe de Cuff or Leakies. Yeah are my mm-hmm. favorites yeah. I prefer Cavity to Cup over Mavericks because like it's an Ottawa show so it's usually not going to fill up so I'd rather play to like you know a really tight packed room instead of like a really open dispersed yeah. crowd you know um, or Leaky just because it's 50 bucks to book you can't go wrong yeah mm. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Do you guys find that you have like fans of all ages or is that mostly people close close to your age because metal is one of those genres that I feel like there are people from every age category mm-hmm. that are really Depends on the band for us, I think. Okay. Like, for Domination, I think most of our fans... Oh, sorry. Most of our fans are uh, a lot older. Like, uh, like when we played in uh, Montreal, we played to, like, almost exclusively people, like, from 30 to 50, I'd say. But, like, in Gland, uh, Death Grind's, like, a much newer genre that hasn't been around, like, as long as thrash metal. So, like, I find a lot of our fans there are a lot younger and, like... Yeah, usually teenagers. Teens to, like, late 20s. Hmm. Something like that. That's cool. Yeah. What's your opinion on new metal? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> We're not talking. I, about I don't that. like new metal. Sorry, but was, <laughs> I know like, it's like a. I, I feel like most people are like anti new metal. So I'm just curious. Um, I like it. Yeah, I like I it. Like it. Yeah, I'm you like fine it? With it. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. I'd say like 
Limp Bizkit was probably the most like avant-garde and experimental show I've ever seen live. Really? Like it was the weirdest and most <laughs> cool thing I've ever seen. That's interesting. Like that, like that's what got me more into new metal. Like okay. I was pretty well against it. Like I skipped Corn at Rockfest. Like I just I'm not a fan. Yeah. But uh, Limp Bizkit I had to watch because like Shug dragged me out yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. And man, that was surreal. Like man, they finished off cool. and like the Bee Gees was playing and they were just dancing around on stage. Like it was just really cool. <laughs> what a <Yeah>. show. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I shouldn't say I, I dislike new metal. I just don't listen to it. I guess because mm-hmm. I find a lot of those bands also do get like bad. Like they're like, oh, it's just boring, or like it's just it's, it's just rap rock kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. really obnoxious. Yeah. I find yeah. like in yeah. your face. Mm-hmm. It's really ripped on for being ridiculous. Yeah. And I think yeah. a lot of the people who do it are ridiculous people. So yeah. it's not even the genre. It's just mm-hmm. like this person. Yeah, because I mean, like you can argue that the Limp Bizkit's first album is one of the best like new metal albums of all time. Some people like I hear people who don't even like new metal say like yeah it's a good album something yeah. like that like I've so th- I think it just has like a bit of that bad like <laughs> like the that like tainted like early two thousands kind of like yeah. that was a bad so. era in general though, yeah for, a lot of, for all music yeah I mean Limp Bizkit is kind of okay to shit on because they have Fred Durst in the band true <laughs> but, I was gonna hey, say man, I don't think it's a problem yeah it's not really a problem with the music it's a problem with Fred Durst yeah <laughs> yeah no one just like Edge just everyone hates Fred Durst yeah yep. have you. Um, I love Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone has their own. Like, yeah, I don't judge. <laughs> Is there, say, um, artist you hope you can, like, play with someday? Like, a metal artist you can maybe open for or just work with someday? Uh, well, for me, probably Exodus. They're one of my favorite bands. One of the best thrash bands, I think, in, of all time. Definitely deserving of the top four or the big four oh, yeah. of thrash. Um... I guess for Domination, I'd really love to play with Sodom. I feel like that would be just, like, the perfect fit for us. I've always been saying, like, we're basically, like, Sodom from Ottawa, but worse. (laughs) And, like, that would be really cool. (laughs) Get a chance to play with, like, one of the original, like, Death Thrash kind of bands from uh, Germany. That would be really sick. Nice. For Gland, I don't know, man. I just want to play a lot of sick, like, grind shows. Like, I really want to play with, like... I just want to play OEF. Like, there's no bands I specifically want to play with. I just want to play Obscene Extreme Festival. Okay. And play with all the bands I want to play with. That's fair, yeah, yeah. Um, another, something I thought about, like, for, like, other, like, metal bands. There's also, like, a lot of, like, I don't want to say joke metal bands, but, like, bands like Guar and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Do you guys have an opinion on stuff like that? Like, do you think it's, inter- like, an interesting twist on it or kind of uh, almost poking fun at it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's fun, but, like, it really gets old, like, kind of quick. Mm-hmm. Like, once you've heard, like, one, you've kind of heard them all. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's so. Yeah, I think like comedic metal, it's uh, it's got to be like in uh, moderation, you know. Like I can't really do like twenty hours of Steel Panther or something. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people don't know, but like Gland is basically comedic metal. Like it's all just like parody over the top violent stuff. Where like like for example, Pyrophilic Consumption. That song's about drinking gasoline and masturbating while you burn from the inside. That's just that like like a party and a half, right? Yeah. <laughs> that one's uh, like just sort of a parody. Like a it's blowing out of proportion the idea of like people who like to get burned with cigarettes, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's just like a joke on it the, the lyrics you can tell if you read them they're pretty like funny and all over the place like uh can we do a dramatic reading do you have them up online <laughs> yeah I, I actually i might have a couple oh my god oh man i'm, here for I'm it. excited for the reading i'm ready of, you gotta do uh, this more often just, reading i'm gonna try to find one that's like not that bad because i don't want anyone to tune in and then hate me you know <laughs> <laughs> i like it was really difficult uh, trying to explain this stuff to the girlfriend's dad like <laughs> When he first asked, like, what chainsaw pissyotomy meant, and I just, like, what? shot him uh, the definition of a pissyotomy. I was like, that, but, like, with a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I looked it up before you guys came in here, and I was like, why don't you just use a scalpel? It sounds so much easier than a chainsaw. <laughs> so, a couple lines here, like, um, I can't resist. The urine burns too strong. Jerking my wrist. At this rate, it won't be long. The fire's building and burning my insides. My body's filling. A sulfur suicide. Um, not long left now. I can feel myself expand. It must come out. Burning by my own hand. Um, like all these see. like plays on words here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I like to think they're it pretty Hunter. decent. They're. Uh, I'm trying to find one of the ones that Hunter wrote because his are hilarious. <laughs> Man, his are a whole other level. He just wrote one the other day, uh, a few weeks ago, called "Job of the Butt." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just about like a sexual encounter with like someone who's like just like Jabba esque. <laughs> and I think it opens with like uh, something of liquor, a bucket of chicken. That's how I begin my mission. <laughs> 
something like that. It's really good. <laughs> I can't find it right now, but uh, we'll have that song released in a few months. Don't yeah. worry. I like that, like the fine line between comedy and serious. Yeah, like yeah. it's gross and it's violent, but it's also like really tongue in cheek. Yeah. And I think if you're gonna get that like gross with it, you kind of have to be a little bit yeah. humorous. Yeah, you just have to humor with it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't take it too seriously sometimes too. You just gotta. <laughs> yeah. You gotta enjoy what you're doing if you don't wanna. Like, exactly. Like yeah. you're just writing metal just to be brutal and not have fun with it. Just like oh, that's no fun. Be, yeah. Yeah, when you have to put on like a persona the whole time and like act yeah. serious, it's just yeah, it takes the fun out of it, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about like those metal like musicians like say Lars who like take everything so serious and stuff like that? I don't know. I could, I couldn't do it. It's too exhausting. Yeah. Like, yeah. Same thing. Maybe, yeah. Be too much. Just like having your band like serious all the time. Just like we're we're a fun band. We just yeah. like to have yeah. fun. Just like yep, we sing about like you know. You know, burning ourselves while masturbating and like <laughs> chainsaw episiotomies and stuff. Like, it's just what we do. Whatever, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's fun stuff. Yeah, because I know there's like a lot of people who are like, oh no, we're, we're a serious band. We gotta like put on this persona. We gotta be like very like, like people like Axl Rose to it. Like, if you don't cheer <laughs> during my set, I'm gonna end it. Like, <laughs> like it's, why, why would you even enjoy playing country. music at that point? Yeah. We gotta be able to take it seriously. Sorry, not be able to take it seriously yeah. because, uh, <laughs> When you're writing like so much shitty music, you gotta be able to laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I know you guys, um, your two metal projects are both like very different style-wise. Would you ever venture outside of metal, like some other type of music that you do? Or yeah, I'd be down to. But what would you do? Oh. Um I don't know. Morgan's getting into SoundCloud rap, actually. Oh, yeah. I actually thought about rapping. <laughs> do it. I know how to say words. I'm sure I could yeah. rhyme something. Joey could yeah, do yeah. it for you. He'd produce yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can make funny raps. Probably not about masturbating and mm -hmm. lighting yourself on fire. But I mean, you never I know. Mean, you never know. We could. Anything yeah. goes. How about you, Zach? Any we should start a rap group. Oh, yeah, do it. Good. Uh, well, Morgan and I have talked a bunch about like starting like a pop punk band. <laughs> and like, yeah. it would be like Hunter from Gland on drums and like him on guitar and me on bass. Yeah. And we'd probably all sing and stuff like that. Um, I once when I was like 14 tried to get a jazz trio going and that didn't turn out too well. Mm -hmm. But probably because I have no real musical theory training so that was a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> I mean um, hey some jazz musicians are like actually have no formal training at all too which is crazy it's improv you can make mm -hmm. it up. just do whatever it's jazz let's well, start an improv band yeah and improv metal. every set if you metal if you do <laughs> just join an improv jazz. group <laughs> yeah. just quit music and do improv <laughs> let's just, yeah do that good idea something we were actually trying to start with is a podcast we're trying to connect like the topics mm -hmm. like from our previous guests so we had Bradley on last time he's an animator and he's big into metal music so we asked him about like his opinions on metal and everything what bands he likes mm -hmm. I think next we're gonna try to have someone who's a comedian on um, Ben Hagel Ooh. if you know who that is oh uh, yeah yeah but cool. he has been flaky Ben I hope you hear this later um <laughs> but yeah so you guys comedy is pretty important to you guys i think like, yeah, do you definitely. like to have fun and enjoy it do yeah. you guys do you guys like even do like say stage banter that tends to be funny and just try that or nah it's not really your thing. i don't know like stage banter <laughs> like planned stage banter isn't really our thing like but off the cuff stuff i guess yeah sometimes we talk a bit okay. and but yeah usually it's uh pretty like short and sweet i'm usually just like okay this is the next song yeah. this next one is about something gross yeah and yeah Boom. just go right into it <laughs> just the snare pop and then you go mm. nice. do you guys have like favorite comedians that you would watch just to stand up or anything or i mean i watch like mitch hedberg a bit mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's the only comedian i really watch he's pretty classic he's yeah. good though yeah he's the best yeah. I don't watch too much stand-up personally. Okay. Like I, yeah, I've never been super into stand-up comedy. I'm more into just like comedy movies, oh, yeah. like uh, stoner comedies or where it's at. <laughs> Anything <laughs> Kevin Smith is. Like, Those are pretty good. I like yeah. stoner. I'm the least stoner person ever, and I love stoner comedies a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's I like I was. I feel like I was more into them before I started smoking weed. Yeah, like <laughs> way into Mallrats. <laughs> oh yeah, classic. I still haven't seen Mallrats out of all the Kevin Smith movies. What? I've played, like, I've watched Clerks one and two so many times, but I've never watched Mallrats. I have a signed Blu-ray copy. I'll bring it to you. I have it's on Netflix. Now. I can just watch. Oh it. right, it is. Yeah, now. so I have it like in my queue. I just haven't watched it. It's pretty good. The only thing about the Netflix version is it doesn't have the like unrated extended opening. Oh yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been great, guys. Yeah, I had a good time. Yeah. I had a fun time. Yeah, well, um, thanks for having us on. No problem. It was fantastic. You have an EP out for Gland. 
Yeah, we just released it on April 27th through Ron and Rancid Records. You can actually get it on like a ton of other record labels throughout the states because they were working in a cooperative effort to get in like some labels in like Florida and like I think with one in New York and mm-hmm. yeah, it's just it's all over. So you can get it really easily. It's four bucks to order online. It's yeah. free to get digitally. So and do you have anything out with Domination yet or no? We have a really shitty album that came out <laughs> a year ago or so, and we're gonna re-record that actually like ASAP with some new songs and the new drummer and everything, and nice. it's gonna be uh, yeah sick. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> we'll end with Chainsaw Pisciotomy by Glam.